When I talk to people about the Research Council, I let them know that, that this is really an unknown part of VDOT, that we are constantly looking at things you wouldn't think we would be looking at. The Research Council is here to help us make better decisions about the investments we make in our transportation system to make our assets last longer, to increase service life, to improve the operations of the system just all around make our transportation system the very best that it can be. It's where people in VDOT go to, to either solve a problem or help solve a problem or uh, creating a new future. Technology is changing so quickly. We're actually able to, to vet some of those technologies to see which are most appropriate for VDOT, which are valuable for helping VDOT meet its overall goals. Always asking the questions, what if? What if we did something different? That is where the Research Council really sets its stage of looking for innovation and being a leader in that space to be able to help drive change within VDOT and within industry to be able to make things better. Whether it's with traffic engineering, our signal systems, pavements, how can we save time, money, and keep people safe? VTRC had its origins in the Department of Tests during World War II. At that point, we did not know we were going to win the war. And to still be thinking out, you know, into the future about what would make VDOT a stronger organization at that time, I think that's just incredible that someone had that foresight and really kept pushing on it until, you know, the Research Council came into being. What had been the very small office moves up to Charlottesville, becomes a cooperative situation with the University of Virginia, and at that point it's headquartered down on the UVA grounds. We start to add on some other um, situations, not just uh, materials, but economics, structures, safety, some traffic engineering. Later 50s, early 60s, we, we go very, very heavily into um, rideability and paving. You start to see things like um, environmental impact statements. That was a huge thing when it started and we were right in the forefront. You start to see much more emphasis on traffic engineering and that keeps on growing. And also safety, drunk driving, seatbelt survey. We did a lot of initial seatbelt uh, research here. You're starting to see a lot more emphasis on improving materials, on longevity, a uh, great deal of emphasis on uh, bridges, extending the life of bridges. We were really charting um, new territory. Pardon the pun, we did not have a roadmap as to where we were going. When I was director, we, we, we aggressively tried to establish an internship program for the undergraduate students to get them introduced and interested in transportation. At any given time in this building, there were students are all you know within all of the different teams doing a host of work, valuable work, and and getting meaningful experience. You get instant uh, credibility in your research if you tie it to back to the Department of Transportation. We're that liaison. We represent that tie from research to getting the pavement to the road, kind of, the, that concept. And over time, and certainly over the last 25 years, we've become every bit as dependent on many of the other state universities to conduct the work that VDOT needs us to conduct for them. If we're gonna to get to a future in which there is safe, ubiquitous, and effective transportation, it's extremely important to prepare the next generation workforce so that they can carry on the work that has been started in this current generation and continue to work towards those long-range visions of this amazing transportation system that we all want. This is a multi-generational problem. We have to, we absolutely have to keep our eye on that long-term prize if we're gonna make this system work. So 
we started out very materials focused, very traditional uh, civil engineering. And now, you know, we have folks that are doing environmental research. We have economists on staff. We, we have a very robust operations program. We have our pavements and our structures teams, which are cornerstones of our program. Traffic disruptions uh, is a big deal. So we try to make concrete that gain strength in within hours rather than days or weeks or months type of thing. So we do all those kind of research activities in this lab. And then we have the opportunity to take it and then put it into practice. And that's, I think, is very exciting. My job specifically is to research ways we can make pavements better and make them longer lasting. Specifically, my research is focused in the last 15 years or so on incorporating recycled materials into pavements. Hopefully, in the, in the short term, nobody sees any difference between a recycled pavement and a, and a not recycled pavement. Over the long term, it means cost reductions for VDOT and also environmental savings. My wife is an asphalt researcher. Yeah, we, we try not to take it home, but sometimes it leaks over. But the joke at home has been that our kids are going to be designing pavements by the time they're seven. Since we do research on the structures side of things, you know, bridges, um, the underwater tunnels, and the culverts, the idea is to uh, tinker with uh, new upcoming uh, cutting-edge materials that can last a long time without having to have constant maintenance needs, uh, which is a, a big draw on the resources of the transportation agency. One of my favorite projects, uh, which actually is started here first, is how to improve the service life of bridges, including corrosion resistant rebars. And corroding reinforcing leads to the, de the rapid deterioration of concrete. So that was one thing that they helped us do, is to come in and establish a program to use corrosion resistant reinforcement in all of our new bridges. And we are seeing an increased service life of bridges in Commonwealth. We focus on highway safety as well as mobility. And so really what we're focused on is saving lives, time, and money. So really all of our research is uh, very practical and focused on how to do things in the near term that, that we can really make a difference in the lives of Virginians on a day-to-day -day basis. At the Virginia Tech Transportation Institute, VTTI, uh, we are focused on creating a future, a future of transportation with completely safe uh, and ubiquitous equitable transportation. DTRC is a very close collaborator in a variety of ways. Uh, as sister state agencies, we work together very closely to improve transportation across the Commonwealth. Uh, right out here, out of my window, is the Virginia Smart Roads. That's a network of roads that are contained within a closed facility where we can conduct research that wouldn't be safe on the live roadways here within our facility, uh, again, on VDOT's land managed by VTRC, uh, but within the premise here of VTTI where we conduct that research in order to look at a variety of ways where we can make transportation better. So one of the big areas that we are focused on is resiliency. How can we make the transportation network more resilient in the face of climate change, changes in rainfall, and some of the best memories have been seeing how people collaborate across the agency or with staff to get work done. Bridges last longer. That means tax dollars are saved or tax dollars are spent in other ways. Roadway systems are safer. What does that mean? Well, traffic deaths uh, are, are down, collisions are down. That, that, that there's, so there's those kinds of things that, that the traveling public uh, gains a great benefit from. We have lots of data, lots of digital information, and our focus now is how to integrate all of the data to create a digital replica of our roadway infrastructure and simulate what-if scenarios and make better decisions and more predictive outcomes rather than reactive and do more preventive maintenance. The big project which we're trying to wrap up is on wrong way driving. We're looking at ways to develop a systemic plan to help counter wrong way driving by suggesting some countermeasures that VDOT can install to alleviate wrong way driving. One of the big issues is 
people making left turns into the wrong way. So if we put up channelizing devices, it would prevent the left turn from occurring. And I like the Research Council very much because uh, this uh, creates an environment for us that promotes learning, productivity, and implementation. Putting these uh, findings, these research findings, into practice. And we have money dedicated to implementation, so if I go out to a district and I say, I'd like you to replace this material with that material, but I'll pay the difference, that makes it a much easier conversation to have. Uh, and people are much more willing than um, to take on that, that additional risk and, and try something different. So the TRIP program, uh, when I came here, that was a research report that was issued and it said we should do that. And we initially funded that project to get that started around the Richmond area and it has now broadened uh, around the state to most of the major interstates so that people are not stuck in traffic as long by using the, these new techniques for towing. And I, I think that's really been a big benefit to Virginia. It does take time for the implementation and the full effects to be felt, but what the Research Council does and the breadth of the organization touches every aspect of a Virginian's life, whether it be from the smoothness of the asphalt that is laid to the bridge decks and the longevity of concrete. So every fall, the Research Council um, asks for ideas for new research. Um, our team at Central Office in the field um, put those ideas together, submit them to the Research Council, and then we come together as the Research Advisory Committee in the fall. Uh, we work through those ideas and rank them, and the Research Council then moves forward with the top-ranked ideas um, and starts that research, and then we move into a, a reporting stage um, at the spring meeting each year. You know, we have a small physical footprint, but we have a very large collection for the specialized transportation work that, that VDOT needs. When I started, the belief was that the library had 14,000 items. We continue to grow our collection so that today is closer to about 180,000 catalog records. We are helping preserve things like the VDOT Bulletin. That one title alone is a wealth of transportation uh, information. That's representative of many of the kinds of things that we have in addition to the most current technical and engineering research and information that is needed by people like the folks working on the HRBT tunnel expansion right now. So I think to be successful at the Research Council, you have to be curious. You have to want to question um, not only why we do something the way we do it, but is there a better way? And I, I think that curiosity is what is key to a really successful research career. We're asking VDOT to make changes, and, and change is difficult. Being confident in, in your answers and your conclusions and your recommendations is critically important. So you need to stand by that, stand by what, what your findings are in your work. I think it's, it's that resilience that, in, in addition to that curiosity and, and just being focused on getting the, the true answer regardless of, of what the audience that you're working for, what they might want. I think for the next 75 years, I'd like to see a, a more uh, environmentally conscious pavement and pavement design. Uh, being used around the country and I think that's pretty achievable. I, I think the next 75 years I think one of the biggest things is going to be managing expectations. I think people see these changes in technology whether it be AI, machine learning, and they think that they're immediate answers and immediate solutions and I think it's going to take a significant amount of time to fully integrate those into our how we how we operate as an agency but a lot of it is still fundamental civil engineering with materials, asphalt, pavement, concrete, structures, that type of thing. So I think there are some changes there, but there's some, there's some also, again, some similarities. So my challenge to the Research Council is, over the next several years, look to be able to better broadcast the message of your research, those products, and let's put research in motion. In addition, 
to the changes in technology, we also have an outstanding and more talented staff. So I often joke that if I tried to interview for a job today, I probably wouldn't get it because I don't feel like I'm qualified compared to the people we've been bringing in. You have an amazing group of people. You have an amazing amount of um, a brain power, of innovation, of inventiveness. And it's, it's a privilege to, uh, to be here and to be working with these, uh, with these folks. The Research Council is like a family. Oh, you will be amazed, it's like a family. Not a day goes by that I don't miss the, the people uh, because um, we, had, we had a common goal, whether it was looking at smart roads or, or looking at pavement design or looking at bridge design. We all had a common goal that was to do research work that mattered to VDOT. I, I got a chance to work with the best people in this industry, and working with these people has always been the brightest spot in my life. So the research that we do here at the Research Council isn't intended to just sit on a shelf in a nice, nicely done report. But what happens here hits the road and changes people's lives. It's intended to make a difference on the road, to make a difference to you as a user of the system, and to all of the VDOT employees across the Commonwealth that are out there keeping that system operational for you. The impacts of that work will last for years to come. Congratulations on a job well done in your first 75 years. I'm looking forward to seeing what you can produce in the next 75 years.